Well, good morning, church. Uh, today, we're talking about a new subject. We've been in our I Will series. We were in it for six weeks. We finished it up last week. But today, we start a just a, a brand new sermon. It's just going to be a one sermon. Um, it's not going to be a series or anything like that. But today, we are talking about fear. I'm sure that this is a subject that we've all, in a, in a certain way, we've thought about over the last few months, and especially the last couple of weeks. You know, where is our country headed? Uh, what's going on in our world uh, with this virus? I mean, just so many unanswered questions, and, and it does bring up a lot of concerns. But, but listen, folks, we are not to fear. We are not to fear, but, but I do feel led to talk about fear today. And I want to I talk about some fears that you and I have. And then I want to talk about one thing that we should all fear, but we often don't. Okay? Uh, so we're going to talk about two things today that we fear. And we're going to talk about one thing that we should all fear, but we don't seem to do that a lot. Okay? Um, but before we get started, go too far in, I, I want to go ahead and lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for this day, and thank you for all the many blessings of it. God, just right now we come before you and we ask you to uh, uh, be with our service today, God. Help me as I preach. God, I pray for the ones listening. God, I pray that uh, uh, they take it in and they use it in their life. God, I pray that I take it in and I use it in my life, God. God, forgive us all where we have failed you. Just lead God and direct us in everything uh, that you want us to do. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Uh, like I said, today's message is simply entitled, Fear. Now, uh, the, the definition of fear, like you don't know, but, but I want to read it to you anyway. The definition of fear is this. An unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of fear. I'm not a fan of it. Um, there's not been too many times in my life where I've just been out and out afraid of something. Now, I'm sure you can say the same thing, but there's times in your life where you have feared. And, and right now, in our nation's history, uh, and in our world right now, it, it, this may be a time that you are fearing. And, and we're going to address those things today, okay? We're going to address them. Um, but let's talk about two things that people fear and then one thing that we all should fear but often don't. First, uh, if we had discussed um, fear three months ago, uh, what I would have said to you then might have been uh, a, a little bit different. Um, three months ago, I would tell you that um, people feared the coronavirus. Um, but I'll be honest with you. I don't know how much people really fear the coronavirus. I have decided that the most accurate statement I can make at this point at, in time is this. People fear what the media feeds them. Listen to me. People fear what the media feeds them. Now what I want you to listen to me right now Please listen, hear me out. Please don't tune me out, turn me off, or whatever right now. Listen to me. I am not saying that people should not have been concerned about the virus. I do think we all should be very concerned about the virus. I think we should still take steps to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to stay healthy. Okay? So I don't want you to think, well, Ryan's saying that, that the virus was a conspiracy. No, I did not say that. I'm simply saying that what the media does to you and me in all aspects of life is to try to drive fear into our lives. They are fear mongers. They are fear mongers. So what I want to say to us today is, is we have to be careful, folks. Me included. We all have to... We all have to be careful what we allow to go into our ears, what we allow our eyes to see, and what we allow our minds to dwell on. I want us to look at a scripture right now that I really feel like 
helps us with this. Uh, this area about the, the fear that the media tries to pour upon us. And like I said, I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't have been concerned about the virus. We all should be. Still, to this day, we should still be concerned, okay? But the media makes everything far worse than what it really is. Have you ever noticed that when you watch the news, it's nothing but negativity? Do you Hardly ever do you see a positive story on the news anymore. It's so they can drive fear into us. But I want to read some scripture to you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God, listen to me, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and of sound judgment. God has not given you and I, Christian, a spirit of of fear. We are not to be afraid. We can be concerned, but we do not need to be afraid because you and I, as children of Almighty God, have been given a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of sound judgment. Here's what I want to say about those three things. God has given us a spirit of power. We don't have to be cowards, folks. We don't have to be cowards. We don't have to feel like cowards, and we don't have to be cowards. We can stand up to anything because God is on our side. God is in control. And if we will realize that in our lives, then we have the spirit of power that can stand up to anything. Fear aims to knock you down. Fear aims to knock me down. But God has given us a spirit of power to stand up to fear. God has given us a spirit of love. Now, we've all heard the old saying, love conquers all. Love can conquer all. Well, God has given you and I, child of God, a spirit of love so that we can share that love with others and overcome the most difficult of circumstances. A spirit of love draws us closer together, but, but fear aims to divide. See, see, the media, listen to me now, the media is trying to cause you and I fear so that we can feel like, we're, like we're, we can't have any control, like, like, like everything's just constantly out of control. But, but God's given us a spirit of power to... Spirit of power to stand up to that. Fear from the media aims to divide us as a country. Do you not see the division going on in our world? But see, God has given us a spirit of love to draw us closer together. Spirit of love to draw us closer together. All you got to do is look at Mark chapter 12, verse 31. Love your neighbor as yourself. If, if we want this world to change, all we got to do is love each other. Love each other. But not only has God given us a spirit of power and a spirit of love, He has given you and I, child of God, a spirit of sound judgment. A spirit of sound judgment. We have been given the ability through the Holy Spirit to discern what is right and what is wrong. God has given us this ability to, to know when truth is being spoken and when a lie is being spoken. See, fear, 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 fear tries to drive that out. That, that fear wants you to believe the lie. Fear draws you to believe the lie. And see, that's what the media wants us to do. And I'm not saying that all media is bad. But we have to be careful. Again, let me repeat this. We have to be careful what goes in our ears, what, what our eyes see, and what our minds dwell on. We have to be careful. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, a spirit of, of love, and a spirit of sound judgment. He has given you and I the ability to know what is right and what is wrong and what to believe and what not to believe. That's what God's given us, child of God. The media wants to knock you down. It wants to knock me down. It wants to knock
lock our whole nation down. It wants to divide us and make us feel like we have no control over the situations of today. But I'm going to encourage us all, me included, of two things. One, we have to reduce the amount of time that we spend with media. We have to reduce the amount of time we spend with media. And number two, we got to spend more time with God. And see, if we don't feel those spirits of power, love, and self-control, and sound judgment more in our lives, I guarantee you it'll happen. Spend more time with God than you do your media, and you will see the spirit of power, love, and sound judgment, or self-control, whatever your Bible says. You will see that more and more in your life. Now, I told you there were two things that people fear. The second thing is this. People fear death. They fear death. I want to tell you what I really believe. Now, this is opinion only, okay? So this may not be what you believe, and this may not be, you know, this may not be just, just absolute 100% what everybody would think, okay? This is an opinion of mine. I don't really feel at the end of the day that people were scared, of, quote, unquote, of the coronavirus. I think if we got down to the heart of the issue that most people are afraid of where they will spend eternity if they die because of the coronavirus. It's not about will I get the coronavirus. We've seen many reports that many people, many, many people have recovered. But what, we're, what, what people are scared of at the end of the day, they are scared of dying. And the reason people are scared of death is because they are afraid of where they will spend eternity. And you got two choices, heaven or hell. And Jesus Christ paid your ticket to heaven if you just choose him. But if you don't choose him, I can guarantee you that you are going to spend eternity in an awful place called hell, a place that was not prepared for you or for me. But folks, Christian, especially Christian, and, and, and I want you to know that you and I should not fear death. I'll be honest with you, and you may think this sounds weird, but each day that I get older, I'm looking forward to the day that I cross over to the other side. I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of the sickness and pain of this world. Yes, I love my family, and I love my friends, and I love my church. But let me tell you something. Where we're going to spend eternity... If we're going to spend it with Jesus, it's going to be so much sweeter than what we're go what's going on in this world right now. Don't fear death. If you're a child of God, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing. Jesus can take away that fear. And I want to encourage you right now, if you have a family member or a friend, share Jesus with them. You are not okay with them going to hell, so tell them right now how to be saved. Tell them that it's as simple as calling out to Jesus and asking Him to forgive them of their sin. If you don't know how to do it or you're scared to do it, share the video today and tell them to, to, to get to this point in the video and listen up. Jesus Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago with the sole purpose of going to a cross and dying for your sins and my sins, the things that we do that go against God. If, if it's not perfect, it went against God, okay? Simple as that. Jesus went to a cross, died on it, was buried. Three days later, he arose from the grave. The Bible says that if you can believe that and you can trust that and you'll declare that Jesus is God, you will be saved. If you want to know more, you reach out to me. Ron Cripps, reach out to me. I'll tell you how to be saved. I'll walk you through it. I'll be glad to do it. But the people who are fearful of death are afraid of where they're going to spend eternity. That's it at the end of the day. If you're a Christian, you have nothing to fear. Yeah, we've never experienced death before. Yeah, that bothers me too. But don't be afraid of dying. You're going to be in the arms of Jesus. Now we've talked about that people... 
fear what the me media puts out toward us. We, we talked about that people fear death. Let me talk about this one thing right quick that people do not fear like they should. And here it is. And I'm going to admit something openly to you right now. I don't fear it like I should. You hear me? Your pastor does not fear it like he should. I don't think anybody does. After I've read the verse, after I've studied, I've prayed about it, I've thought about it, I don't think anybody in this world truly fears this one thing like they should. Like I said, there are two things that people fear. This is one of those things that we should fear. Absolutely, without any doubt, you and I need to fear this one. Those others, we don't need to fear. We need to trust God. But this one, we need to fear. Okay? And here it is. You and I don't fear God. We fear, we fear what the media puts out to us. We fear death, but we don't fear God. Brother Ryan, you saying you don't fear God? After reading this verse the other day, I'm going to openly admit to you I don't fear God like I should. I want to read you a verse. I'm, going to, I'm actually going to read it out of three translations. I always read out of the Christian Standard Bible. That's my go-to translation. One of the easiest ones to read. If you're looking for a Bible, get you a Christian Standard Bible. Very easy to read, very easy to understand. Exodus 20, 20. In the Christian Standard Version of the Bible says this. Well, let me back up a little bit before I get there. Moses is uh, with the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. They are scared because God has told them not to come near Mount Sinai. If they touch it, they die. And, 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 and the Ten Commandments have just been told, they've just been told what the Ten Commandments are. And, and here these people are. They're at this mountain. They're close to this mountain. There's thundering. There's lightning. They are scared. They are fearful. But this is what Moses says to the Israelite people. Don't be afraid for God has come to test you so that you will fear him and you will not sin. Don't be afraid for God has come to test you so that you will fear him and will not sin. Let me read this out of the NIV. Now the NIV is one of my least favorite translations. If you use it, that's cool. That, that's, that's your choice. It's not one of my favorites. I'm not putting down the NIV. If you want to read it, awesome. Um, that's just not my go-to translation. But let me read this because I really feel like they, they got this one right really good, okay? NIV says this. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Okay? Keep you from sinning. The fear of God will be with you so you won't sin. That's really good, okay? Now let's look at the New American Standard Bible. The most literal translation that has been tr translated into English, basically. It's, it's even more literal than the King James. If you like King James, New American Standard even goes further into making sure that it's accurate, okay? And this is what Moses said in the New American Standard. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may remain with you, so that you may not sin. So you may not sin. Folks, we don't have to choose sin. But this verse says that if we've got the fear of God in us, if we fear God, it should keep us from sinning. I don't know about you, but I still willfully sin at times. I still decide to do what Ryan Cripps wants to do. And if I want to take that verse literally, I don't fear God like I ought to. And you don't fear God like you ought to because you choose to do what you want and I choose to do what I want. See, that's not good. We need to fear God. We need to fear God. Let me read you what Psalm 111 verse 10 says. It says, The fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. And all who follow his instruction has good insight. His praise endures forever. I don't know about you, but I got some work to do. I need to sin less and fear more. I need to sin less and fear more. So we've talked about today that we don't need to fear what the media puts out because God has given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of sound judgment or self-control, whatever your Bible says. It means the same thing. We don't need to fear death, especially Christians. We don't need to fear death because Jesus has paid it all for us. And if we know somebody who's lost, we need to share Jesus with them today. Like I said, share the video. Let them watch. But we all need to fear this one thing. We need to fear God more. And when we fear God more, we will sin less. Fear God more, we will sin less. I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with one more thing. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says this. Don't worry about anything, but in everything. Don't worry about anything, but in everything. Through prayer and petition. Talk to God about it. With thanksgiving. Be thankful. God's going to take care of it. Present your request to God. Make known to God what you need. And the peace of God, the peace, when you just feel like everything is good and everything is fine, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You don't understand how it's happening. I don't understand how it's happening. It surpasses everything that we possibly could understand. But it says it will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You see, when we talk to God about what we fear, God can change us from the inside out. And when we do that, folks, we don't have to fear what the media puts out. We don't have to fear death. And we'll learn that we need to fear God. I hope you've enjoyed today's message. I hope you got something out of it. I know I did. I've got work to do. And I bet you do too. Have a blessed rest of your day. And I hope I'll see you again next Sunday.